Hello and welcome to the aftermath. My name is Ian, and as always, I'm joined by Dylan. Yeah. You can already tell by how structured and calm and collected the intro of this episode is that um, Ethan's not with us. <laughs> so we got to make up <laughs> for we gotta it. Make up. Ah. We are vengeance. <laughs> we are the night. <laughs> <laughs> we will. We will. <laughs> we are the police. <laughs> I got cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do also have cheese. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was uh, it's one of those kind of nights. Mm-hmm. Hey, mm-hmm. I, uh, I I know what guy, right? And he was like, I got a, got a half a cheesecake here, and ain't nobody gonna eat it. And I was like, Well, bullshit, I, nobody's gonna <laughs> eat it. Give me that motherfucker. I mean, if you're gonna twist my arm about it, I'll take it. <laughs> right? <laughs> nobody's gonna. It's a fucking cheesecake. Yeah, I'm always about Impossible. it. Impossible. So, anyways, um. You had you just said a second ago a trip down memory. This is gonna be a trip down memory lane, yep. and I I really do think that this episode is gonna is gonna be that for me. A while um, back, you had mentioned to me in some wayward conversation that you enjoyed the Warner Brothers uh, superhero like DC cartoons just about as much as I did. Yes, grew up on that shit, and Batman specifically was a standout for you. Oh yeah, I believe before. Uh, I think it was Iron Man. You told me was your like favorite superhero. Batman yeah, Batman was like a the mainstay. the the. If there was a couple of them that started off, whenever I was a kid, Batman was number one. Mm-hmm. Batman was the first superhero that I thought was like super cool. I right. was like, you know, heck yeah, all about. Mm-hmm. The next one after that was I really had a stint where I got really into Spider Man. Was the next oh, one? Oh yeah, and it was because of the Sam Raimi Spider Mans. Ooh, right, that, yeah. that whole era of ones. like the the two the uh, all, obviously all three of them, but mostly the first one and second one, like mm-hmm. the ones that really stuck like stuck out. I was oh, like, yeah. like, I was like, man, Spider Man's cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then. Uh, subsequently like i've always kind of been interested in the idea of iron man right but like that first iron man film was like that next step of like oh man like this mm-hmm. iron man's a really cool like premise for uh yeah. um those were the the big three mans yeah the big three <laughs> mans and, and your early childhood. I, I hadn't and, uh, again um in that time where i i watched a, um a lot of batman mm-hmm. and also like the Spider-Man time as well, yeah. um, was when like the Justice League kind of mm-hmm. was was out oh, as yes. well, and I think they had like uh, the Batman animated series. I think was out at the same time, and I think they were on was it Cartoon Network? I th- I believe so. Yeah, they were I, running. Actually, they may have been running uh, the Batman animated series and the Superman animated series, right? Like alongside each other. And I right, and I and I that that whole era of like the same kind of like art style, the same like yep. universe. That is peak oh, DC yeah. for me. Yes. I don't know what the fuck they're doing nowadays. Oh, well, but holy shit! Yeah, nothing will ever top those cartoons for me. All right, and, and so and so that was uh, I, that was the majority of what I knew of um, like the DC world. Mm-hmm. Um, my middle brother Eric, who has been on the show occasionally, or I think. A couple times so far. Yeah, here and there. Um, he used to be kind of a collector of uh, comic book stuff and really? also comic books alike. I don't think he does it anymore now, but there was a point in time where he used to have like a pretty cool collection. I don't think he had anything that was like super rare or anything, but like he would regularly go and get new editions of things. And so. Man. See, I'd always entertained the idea in my head, but I just never, I could never go out and just buy a comic book. Interesting. I don't know. It just. I was always on the fence about it, I guess. Oh, really? Yeah. I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed yeah. some of the stories, but I never would, like, go and buy a copy of it myself. Right. But, yeah. There was some really cool graphic novels that I have seen yeah. that have that kind of vibe of, like, a comic book, but it's, like, a like a full-on, like, hardback book or something mm-hmm. that, like, is really... And, I, and I've looked at some of those, and I've read, it, like, a little bit of those, and I'm... Uh, um, they're pretty cool, but... Yeah. Um... There was there was a moment when, um, also during that time, where like I mean, we're talking like early superhero movies, oh, yeah. so like the original like X Men movies came <laughs> out, which were like super cool, yeah. um, and you know and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so like like my obviously I was a Star Wars kid, right? So like I was always like 
superheroes are cool. Like the whole movie premise, the games that mm. were associated with them, the cartoons. I was, I was like, Heck Hulk God. Ultimate Destruction still has a special place yeah. in my heart. <laughs> how much fun I had with that game. Oh yeah, super cool. I have yet to get a copy of it, and it's criminal. Really? Yes. I need to find one as soon as possible. Oh, I'm curious now. Hold on one second. I just want to see. Mm. Um. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> I rem- oh man, yeah. I remember you this played game. That? Okay, I yeah, yeah, did. Yeah. yeah, yeah, dude. I think I rented this from Blockbuster. Classic. Me too. Two thousand five, buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Oh man, look how green he is. Uh-huh. Oh, fucking radio. You can really feel I mean, the yeah, gamma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Ugh. Um. Yeah. So, anyways, there, um, I uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, there was a couple of like um uh, of like movies that, that I got into and all that kind of stuff but like um um Batman's always kind of had a special place in my heart oh, yeah. as like kind of the the OG for me like mm-hmm. that I was I just thought he was super cool the coolest I mean, for many reasons obviously mm-hmm. um yeah now on that topic as far as what we watched goes it was uh Batman the Mask of the Phantasm. Yes. Which I believe was the first film in the animated series. I believe so as well. Yeah. And man, this shit holds up. Uh, yeah. This released in 1993. Oh my God. Yeah. And I was born in 94. So oh, that's so, that so before I was and born. That, and that's what I'm saying. So when, whenever I, whenever I saw the vibe of this all happening, mm-hmm. I was like, dude, this is like, this is the Batman I grew up on. Yeah. Because like very very shortly after this, I might let me let me look it up. When was when did Batman the animated series come out? I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, because I I want to say it was early two thousands. Had to have been. Um, I mean, because if the movie came out in ninety three, it had to be before that, wouldn't it? Well, it was after it. Are you serious? Oh, I mean, hold on. Well, well, let's see. Animated series. Where uh, where's the release date? Oh, I, I was wrong. The first episode debuted in 92. Damn. September of 92. And it said that I think it spanned basically until 99 or 95. Mm-hmm. I think it spanned until 90, 95. And then I think oh, okay. it also, I think it changed stations. But I think it aired up until basically 2000. But um, that's crazy. But I definitely have watched. A majority of that, oh, and yeah. of course, More whatever that. I got the whole series on TV, and I and I really want to watch it at some mm-hmm. point. Same thing for uh, Batman Beyond, which is my personal favorite iteration. Yeah, not only because it's like a continuation of the original series, but just because it keeps that same style. To right, it. right. Um, Bat. Oh, sorry, Justice League Unlimited mm-hmm. had three oh, my seasons. God. And that one's the best. That one debuted in 2004. Oh, yeah, that was prime time for me. Oh, man. I remember coming home from school and oh, just yeah. waiting for that shit to come on. Yeah. So, there, so I think so. there's Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. Mm-hmm. I think that each one of them had two seasons. So, basically, from 2001 to 2005 or six is when that series ran. But man, that like this is like, like you just said a moment ago. This is like the real like DC mm-hmm. era of oh, stuff. Yeah. And then of course Teen Titans was also in that oh, yeah. t- that same space where it was mm-hmm. like you know Cartoon Network kind of vibe. And yeah. I, so I watched the heck out of that. DC was eating good. Oh oh yeah, especially on Cartoon Network. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and then, of course, shortly after all that was whenever the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe kind of started, right. which was really interesting and kind of fun, the the beginning workings of that. So, um, I'm so glad that I'm able to just come back to these yeah. as they are and not I, have to worry about what they're putting <laughs> out now. I, uh, I may have seen this movie in my younger years, but if I did, I don't remember it. Mm-hmm. Um. But this was a lovely little story. Yeah. This really feels like the... I didn't know this, like, going into this. I thought it was, was going to be, like, a random, like, kind of, like, a middle point. Mm-hmm. This really feels like the beginning yeah. of something. Um, 
like I said, with this releasing on 93 mm. and the animated series releasing before that. They definitely hype it up with that operatic version of uh, the main theme. Oh, yeah. Super <laughs> cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but this this really kind of this feels like the beginnings of this Batman mm-hmm. and like some of his, you know, connections to the past and his right. love interest and flashbacks. Yeah. Different points during his <laughs> burgeoning career as a vigilante. Oh, right. Which I mean, I mean, super cool, mm-hmm. especially for like like a the prequel to all of it, like the right. beginning series. It's it's really cool. <laughs> I think my favorite part is one of his first like outings. Where b- before he even has the suit, he's <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, he's going about it like, like there's no intimidation factor to it. Like he's complaining about later, it's like they weren't even afraid of me, <laughs> right? I need to strike fear into them. Well, it's like you have a bunch of criminals mm-hmm. that like are kind of like dressed. They've already dark. thrown the law to the wayside, right? Who's gonna Who's gonna care about some random dude? Who just yeah. shows up in an alley. <laughs> exactly. When especially like like especially one that looks like he could also just blend in with them. Right. Just also be a random yeah, yeah. criminal. <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. They're all dressed dark and like they're trying to like steal equipment or stuff or whatever. And this guy also <laughs> dressed dark but with a ski mask he's on is like, like, Oh, we got a hitchhiker. Yeah, yeah. Who is this guy? Right. <laughs> and he's like Drop everything. <laughs> He's like, why? <laughs> on your stomach, hands on your head. It's like, uh, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Pulls out gun. Yeah, somebody get this guy, a, you know. Right. Yeah, anyways, so. But, uh, yeah, so it, uh, it was, uh, it's interesting to, mm-hmm. to see this kind of <laughs> oh, beginnings man. of this uh, this series. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Alfred's just as sassy and quippy as ever. I do. I love. He's perfect. I love him, dude. I. I mean, uh, <laughs> if ever there was to be a person like that in my life or whatever, a mm-hmm. butler or some sort of like person that would like help take care of that kind of stuff. Their name doesn't even have to be Alfred. I will just call them Alfred. I. I just want them to have that kind of banter with me. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to. I want to be able to have that relationship where I can. Where uh, you know. No matter how pissy I am. Right. You think you know yeah, everything yeah, about yeah. me, don't I you? I see how it is. Well, I dabbed your bottom as a babe. I should <laughs> like to think so. <laughs> exactly. Oh, he drives God. off all angsty. I'm like, yeah. that's great. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> <sighs> what a fun time. Mm-hmm. This, is a, this is a great movie because like, it also shows the human side of Batman, I think. Um I, again, I haven't watched a lot of media recently, to be honest. Oh, yeah, this is the first Batman thing I've watched I, since... It's, it's been a while. I want to say, like, 2010. <laughs> well, and, and, and then not only that, like, I mean, I also... You want to talk about a fake fan? I mean, I obviously have really followed mm-hmm. Batman in recent years, but, like, right. I haven't watched, like, the Dark Knight trilogy yeah. of films, which I know that people... I mean, even if you're not really a big fan of uh, Batman... Um, people in the cinematography world oh yeah so like so i get they'll, from they'll tout it as like a oh one. and i mean that's not to say it isn't like it's a good movie it's oh, a good yeah, series. of course of course it's christopher nolan so i mean i get it it's the same thing with right uh it's the same thing with oppenheimer i haven't seen oppenheimer yet i really would have liked to go see it in imax but there's I just, a lot of I, stuff we would have liked to see this year. oh i know <laughs> well, <laughs> the tail end of last year i i yeah i couldn't find the time to but mm-hmm. regardless uh, you know, same thing. Yeah, it Oppenheimer. Happens. It's great, and of course, you know, it's shot specifically for IMAX. Mm-hmm. So, quality ends up speaking for itself usually, which is why I'm always hesitant to like take people's word on it. Of like, course, for like online reviews or stuff yeah. like that, because I mean, it's all going to be subjective. Some people are going to like it. Some people aren't. Of course, but but with that, the, the saying that I haven't seen any modern media. Of Batman, and most people will tell you it's it's pretty much unanimous that most people will agree that that is a good thing. Really? Yes, I have not heard, I like if any good things about the new DC stuff that's been out. Really? Yeah. So it so um, so I been good. I again I've heard nothing but great things about the Dark Knight franchise. Right. And that's the last thing that I've heard. I haven't seen anything about Ben Affleck. Or Batfleck, or whatever his name, they whatever yeah. the funny quippy name they gave him, um, or the uh, oh gosh, what was his name? Henry Cavill. 
No, no, no. Superman. Or well, well, that too. No, but but the um the guy. He played in Twilight, and I can't remember his name. Robert uh, Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. <laughs> I, I haven't seen the Robert Pattinson oh. uh, yeah. Batman either. See, I have heard good things about that one. I heard that one's full of angst. It definitely. I uh, still have yet to watch it, though. <laughs> right. So, because I'm um, scared. I'm because scared. I'm scared. I don't want it to be bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, but anyways, so I haven't seen a whole lot of stuff. Um, but, but to circle back around to the original point, mm. I liked this little film because it's only about an hour and 15 minutes. Right. Um, that that obviously with this being like the beginning of a series potentially or like the, the foundation of something to kind of build upon, mm-hmm. it's great to see the... I mean, for those of you who know the story of Batman, of course, the loss of his parents and not right. not getting too far in the weeds like that. Like mm-hmm. you're already assumed to know at least a little bit about like the surface level of Batman, right. about who he is. Mm-hmm. Um, this is like that that chapter one feeling of like now we get to introduce like this kind of love interest character and like right. you know the An inner flame, the, 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 like the inner struggle of like you know him now like already making the promise and that all being like a. It's the what happens next now mm-hmm. that I that again I don't think I've actually really ever watched. Yeah. So I've always I've always seen clips and things about like that beginning segment of like how thing how you know Batman came to be sort mm-hmm. of thing. But like that next that chapter one, if you will, right. of like uh the early days. Yeah, yeah. How does he you know, the the <laughs> How does he become the bat? Exactly. Yeah. I think one of my favorite parts was after he had proposed to uh, Andrea. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, holy shit. They meet in their, like, the shared oh, graveyard yeah. of their parents. Uh, Bruce ends up striking up conversation with her, mm-hmm. and they just hit it off really well. Right. And months pass, I'm assuming, they're able to, like, build upon their relationship it until seems like he gets it, yeah. comfortable enough to actually propose to her. Right. And after that, he starts freaking out, like, how am I going to balance my <laughs> yeah. my work and my wife? What mm-hmm. am I going to do? Yeah, yeah. And he starts having a mental breakdown. He goes back to the uh, gravestone of his parents, and it's yeah. just like, how will I do this? I need you to let me go. Yeah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> the one line that stands out to me is, that I didn't count on being happy. Yeah, That's dude. That's fucking sad. Hard. Dude. That's freaking My hard. God. I didn't plan on being happy. Yeah. And now that God I and now that I may be happy now, it's like, oh shit. Now I don't I gotta, know what to do. I don't know what to do now. I don't want to let you down. Yeah. Which I mean that again. That's like his the whole reason he's doing everything he's doing. His of reason for being. Exactly. Or or his parents. Yeah. And he's just he's unable to conflict with that idea, that vow at all. Of course. And it's insane to me. Yeah. I, I, it's insane, but like I can kind of understand it. Oh yeah, from you know his perspective, the deepest commitment you could ever make. Yeah, this is also like set in the 1940s, right? So it's got that sort of Art Deco oh, like metropolitan I, style. Dude, I love it. It's my favorite. It's, it's the same reason why I, I love that vibe of the Big O. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Roger Smith, dude. Okay, so like I never, <laughs> I never, <laughs> I never understood. W- um. Well, I can't say I, I can't say that. Mm. I understood why I liked the Big O right. and the aesthetic of it, but I never quite understood why I think uh, I had such a there's such a stark compa- there's such a um there's a lot of similarities between mm. the Negotiator right. and Batman, mm-hmm. and I think it's that like square jaw right. and from like the animation. So it, like he the has tri- the same the triangular like Dorito like yeah physique. exactly. He has that look, but I think after watching this and like reminding myself of like the time and aesthetic of like the Batman animated series mm-hmm. and like what this is quote-unquote set in because again I'm, i think i've just been so like inundated with like a lot of like modern media or like oh, a yeah. lot of stuff where like any superhero movie now is all like set in like modern present day with right. smartphones and with things and <clears throat> i forgot that like oh this was like a you know 
an artistic expression on like mm. a time period, basically. Like right. there's like the cars are all there. I mean, even down to like there's like a theme park in this movie called World of the Future, right? And it has that whole like utopia. Uh, what is it called? Future funk or a mm. retro future? Yeah, retro called. Future. That, yeah, that whole like vibe of like it has that utopia. Um, I aesthetic. could get down to some future funk right now. Though, I'm, I'm telling honest you, dude. With you. Um, I just recently, uh, at the beginning part of February of uh, January, mm-hmm. came back from Disney World. Oh yeah, and there's a reason why Mallory and I love. Um, well, there's a lot of stuff we love about it. Mm. But in the Magic Kingdom, there's Tomorrowland. Oh, yeah. And Tomorrowland has, it, it has its own kind of vibe. Right. But, like, it has that kind of vibe. Right, the same sort of appeal. Yeah, that, like, 1940s, 50s, um, uh, idyllic look of the future. Um, One of the phrases that said that we loved a lot is, like, um... Oh, God, I can't think Come of it. Come on. And Tomorrowland. Uh, <laughs> the future is uh, now, uh, old man. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's something to do with, like, uh, there. there's there's so much room for, um, there's so much to do today in Tomorrowland mm. or something like that. It's like, like a, it's like a right. phrase. It's like very, anyway, it's so, like, it's so, um, the only thing that Mallory and I could say whenever we like go through the exhibits and see all the things is mm. like in that time period already and like in history, they were already so um, passionate and optimistic about the future. Mm-hmm. And that shows in a lot of all that stuff. Um, and even in this, like even in, oh, even yeah. in this, like this show, the, same type, of the same type of thing of like, we're in like the forties and the fifties or whatever. And, and they have like this idea, like, th- like look, all, look forward of the future. And it's mm-hmm. the, just this like perfect idea. And I wish man. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. And who would have thought? It's so cool if we just kept that style going. Well, we won't go there, but, <clears throat> but anyways, like, so the, so the the cars, the the fact that we're also like the slabs, yeah, <laughs> the slabs of cars, yeah, uh-huh. and uh, and of course the also like the fact that we're dealing with like pseudo mobster type guys, right? O- so old just, style like, gangsters, yeah. Hey, the boss told me to stay right. here, so I'm gonna stay. Pinstripe here. suits, yeah. Hats, cigars, oh yeah. The whole nine <laughs> yards, yeah. There's a point in time where we got a motorcycle gang wearing leather jackets and so oh, yeah. chains around. And I was like, hell <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. That sure was a type. Yeah. <laughs> a tunnel snake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So it's a, I, I love it. I, mm. I love the, the whole aesthetic of this movie. It's super cool. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and also because of the fact that, like, because of the time period, like, there's like restrictions too, mm-hmm. which I think is so, um, It's like with most things in the modern world. It's like it's hard to. It's not impossible. It can be done. Mm-hmm. I think it's less fun to try and like write movies and like create stories around, like some of the modern technology we have. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's there are ways to do it, especially like because like there are, there are things like sci-fi worlds where like right. you can have any kind of technology you want. Yeah, this just made up. But like we're in this we're in this like limbo area where it's like um you can write compelling stories and it's cool, but like I feel like a smartphone kind of ruins the fun and like the mystery oh, of movies yeah. sometimes. And, and not yeah, all the time. But like whenever like a movie deliberately tries to like um tries to subvert having a smartphone or like or, you know or, or has some sort of uh excuse as to why they're not there mm-hmm. it kind of makes it a little bit easier to go like oh like this is now like an adventure or a struggle or something right. like that they could you know it takes um, the train and wheels off right and like there, like there are movies that are kind of set in this time period it's like you had to like like if you're out and about like you may have to go potentially find a pay phone mm-hmm. to like contact somebody about yeah. something and it's like oh, or man. if you're rich enough use your uh, built-in car yeah. phone right 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 which makes it a lot easier as well but right. like you know just thinking about like the conflict of a movie like this where it's like oh yeah like there's there's like communication barriers mm-hmm. and like things take time and effort and like you know yeah it's all that kind of stuff so but anyways cool to think about 
the cool thing about just the juxtaposition of it. I'm trust me, by no means am I complaining about having the technology you do have. <laughs> right. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um but at the same time I'm just thinking like sometimes it feels like um Right. In a setting such as this, I feel like it may take away. Oh right, right, right. But you know. Yeah. Unless it fits in the time period. Yeah. Otherwise, it's fantastic. It's great. Mm-hmm. The only thing that they didn't elaborate on that I think I would like to have a little bit more on yeah. was the fact that um, our, our our main antagonist, the Phantasm, mm-hmm. um, has this like smoke, right? That can like you know um, deflect uh, things and like right. you know, it causes uh, kind evidently of the, has the ability to teleport people. And uh, right. And I, I was kinda, I was. I was suspending my disbelief a little bit on like the making it to where sh- it, things can pass through her. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, maybe there's some sort of fun stuff. But the fact that she can just straight up disappear, I was like, right, okay, like, okay, that's some, that's that's not just because because uh, that's magic. You, yeah, whenever you see her use it, yeah. like it just comes out of her palm. Yeah, like there's no visible port or anything that it comes out of. It's just there. Exactly, and it's like. She's she's just got a superpower, <laughs> right? Well, and again, like in, in this world, obviously we're dealing with uh, the same world that would, um, hypothetically, um, Superman can show up. Right. We got all sorts of the Green Lanterns, the Flash, the Flash, Wonder w- Woman, Wonderful Woman, <laughs> Hawk Girl. <Yeah. laughs> like so, we have like so the the fact that you can have something that seems like magic. As a superpower, mm-hmm. or as like some sort of fancy gadgets, like not far outside the reach, right? But like they don't, they don't ever. They just don't it. explain it. No, no, no. I, again, and I'm not saying I'm not complaining right. about it, but but for me, I I was like, I that that's weird. Yeah, that's a little weird because <laughs> right. she's normal. She's normal. Yeah, she's a normie, mm-hmm. and and but now she can just like conjure up smoke that can teleport her and another person. Yeah, that's uh, like something's going on there. Something's, that, something's a little fishy, <laughs> right? You may say you're normal, but I think you're hiding something. Your vapors would say otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miss Vapors. Right. Oh, man. Lady Smog. I love the design of the Phantasm, though. Oh, it's super cool. Just this very Grim Reaper-esque. Hook claw thing. Yeah, just straight up blade nub. Yeah, I love I love the I love like the the vocal effect that she has on mm-hmm. that makes it sound deep and, all echoey. deep and echoey. Yeah, super cool. Your angel of death awaits. Yeah. <laughs> like damn, how <laughs> ominous! Uh huh. You know, and because of that, it feels in a very serious way. Mm. It feels almost Scooby Doo esque. Oh shit! You're you know right. what I mean? Yeah. Where it's like you have like a person that has such like that has as strong as a strong belief system about X mm-hmm. or something that happened to them or whatever, and so therefore their solution is to like become worse it, it is to like become some sort of like goon or mm. ghoulie or whatever it's like right. to make them like to you know scare off these things or yeah. or kill underneath his alter ego mm-hmm. and then when the when the mask reveal happens it's right. like the, when the gang oh, gets shit. a hold of him yeah 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 <laughs> meddling kids and that stupid right. dog <laughs> the gang and stupid dog in this case yeah. being the joker <laughs> yeah the joker and batman right <laughs> That's so good. Now, you want to know what else is peak and will never be topped for me? What's that? Mark Hamill's Joker. Oh my god, dude. There's a couple of times where um in his vocal delivery mm-hmm. of him talking, I'm I'm like I can't place it. <laughs> right. And there's a couple of times where he's talking where I'm like, man, if I didn't know any better. And and, and I didn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't until and I'm not going to lie to you, recent years. Yeah. When I say recent, I probably mean like the past ten years or so. Right. But like, as a kid, I had no idea. I think Damn. the the name may have like shown up on the credits and stuff. But as right. a kid, I don't think I ever really knew Luke Skywalker's real name. Right. Because I was a kid, and I was like, I don't know, he's Luke Skywalker. It's not something you look into. Exactly. Um. But as like a you know teenager or early twenties or whatever it was, mm-hmm. I was like, oh shit, Mark Hamill was like. The Joker, the Joker for like a for like a large portion of the Joker, mm-hmm. the games, or, or like uh, the Arkham games, oh, yeah. like like I mean, you, know, you name it. He's been the Joker. He's uh, done like, it all. He's done it all, and he's done a great job. Mm-hmm. And uh, in this movie particularly, he's perfect. In this movie particularly, I'm like I'm I was listening to him talk a couple times, and I was like, 
damn man, I didn't if I didn't, <laughs> if I didn't know. Right. I mean, I, you could you could fool me. Mm-hmm. And then he does that signature laugh, the oh, signature yeah. kind of like cackle laugh. Mm-hmm. The I mean, the the iconic Joker right. laugh, and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's that's gold. That's a material. <laughs> I've heard him do that before. Like uh, I've watched a recording of him, like on like a microphone, mm-hmm. like after learning that he was the Joker, right. and uh, after hearing it, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I could see it now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, yeah. And then you, I mean, you can't go wrong with Kevin Conroy. Oh no! That's speaking of like uh, speaking of iconic voices, mm-hmm. and you know. Um, Never will there ever be another Batman for me. Oh yeah, and then I mean, in, and then you know, sad to say that mm-hmm. in twenty two when he passed away, which you know that's yeah, uh, damn shame, no fun. But at the same time, you know, he did good work. He did great work, and we have this movie and other uh, other installations. So in many other too. examples. Um, which is which is awesome. A fine repertoire. <clears throat> so yeah, but um, <laughs> I uh, what you got? I, I'm, I mean, I'm just looking around. Oh, I, I see. I was looking at <laughs> seeing stuff. what you can dig up. Yeah, uh, but mostly I I accidentally still had um <clears throat> the animated series pulled up, but I wanted, oh, I, to, I wanted to look up. Like some fun facts on Mask of the Phantasm. Oh, I see. Uh, but um, I think I'll, I think I fin- figure out something. Mm-hmm. Most of the movie is based on the graphic novel Batman Year One. Really? And Batman Year Two, the flashback of Batman's first night of crime fighting, <laughs> donning a jacket and a ski mask. <laughs> <laughs> is parallel uh, to book one of year one. The design and concept of the Phantasm was derived from the Reaper, the primary villain of year two. Oh, wow. The Reaper. The Reaper. <laughs> the end credit song, I Never Told You, is a, uh, is a rare singing performance by Tia... Uh, wow. You can do it. Um, it looks like Kariri, but I think it's career. Mm-hmm. But I didn't want to just, I, I didn't have the confidence to just like, I mean, say it's, that. It's yeah, one yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone or the other is going to correct us. <laughs> <this time. laughs> That's okay. Um, late in production, Warner Brothers decided to make this movie a theatrical release mm-hmm. instead of uh, the originally intended direct to video feature. Damn. While the animation, oh, sorry, while the animators were thrilled and extremely grateful for this decision. This left them with less than a year of production time. Oh, God. And scrambling to uh, convert the aspect ratio to widescreen Oof. instead of the standard format, which yeah, is... Yeah, but that was nerve-wracking. Yeah. And, and I, think that's, though. I think that's also why it initially on release didn't do as well mm-hmm. because, of, because of that. Yeah. Man. Oh, dude, here we go. Did they know? Here we go. One scene depicts Bruce Wayne at his parents' tombstone saying, I didn't count on being happy. Mm -hmm. According to the writer, Michael Reeves, this scene was to be a pivotal moment in Bruce's tragic life as he denies himself the opportunity to live a normal life. Reeves also stated... When Bruce puts on the mask for the first time after Andrea breaks up their engagement, mm-hmm. and Alfred says, "My God," <laughs> his uh, reacting in horror because he's watching this man he's helped raise from childhood, this man who has left the desire for vengeance and retribution consume his life. Uh, at last embrace the unspeakable. Damn. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. That was from the writer of the film, so that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, I suppose if anyone mm-hmm. could glean that from oh, <laughs> whatever yeah. him donning the mask, it would be Alfred. Of course. My God. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 
That's crazy. That's cool. Um, I think one of the or the one of the directors intended each of the flashbacks into Batman's love life to have a tendency to get worse Ooh. when you hope things will get better. Yeah, which is a very true Sounds thing that happens right. in this film. <laughs> yeah. every, every install in, that install shit hurt. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> so a mm. little bit, little rundown. Just got a few. Because right. uh, I mean, you know, it's not gonna end happily. <clears throat> oh no, no. Because he's still Batman. <laughs> <laughs> but you just you like to hope. I was trying to say there's a couple other ones here, but mm. I, I don't. They're kind of long winded. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, and so we are running up our time, I suppose. Well, well, well I mean, I mean we, we got a schedule to keep. We still got, we still got time, but vigilantism to <laughs> to perform. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm actually, I, I would really like to watch some more of, um, some more of, of, of the, old, the of this Warner era Brothers DC stuff. Yeah, dude, dude. I've got. Like I said before, I've got the entire original animated series on DVD as well as Batman Beyond. I still need to get my hands on the Justice League, but I haven't yet. One series, and I and I mentioned it a second ago or a while ago, mm-hmm. <clears throat> that I haven't had the chance to like rewatch or like really get back into because I just it I, I used to watch it on television on yeah. uh, uh, Cartoon Network and never on the DVDs for it. Mm-hmm. But is Teen Titans. I've got that too, dude. I want. <laughs> I used to watch like whole episodes mm-hmm. of that show. Oh yeah, come on, because again, it was it was so good. It's a good show, and uh, and I mean, you want to talk about you want to talk tragic? <laughs> like I oh, still don't, I still don't think I've like finished out some of the stories of the characters. Really, like like the like the girl Tara. Mm-hmm. Like I know there was a whole lot of stuff that happens with her. Oh yeah. And she like comes she had back. Her own arcs. Yeah, her arcs. Yeah, she used to, mm-hmm. like, she came in and then would leave and then would come back in and then would leave again and like, right. and then eventually I think bunch of crazy shit. Right, and and but I don't think I ever actually know the conclusion of her story. Oh my god, well, that's what I'm saying. Because like I know and I know it's tragic though. Because I know that also like Beast Boy had like feelings. I think and yeah. I know there was like a lot. Of, I know there was like a lot of trauma with Raven and her. F- her <laughs> yeah. If you want to, if you want to dare her call father. it her father, um, man, and that whole situation, and then of course mm-hmm. Slade as well. Like you know, right? Uh, fucking Deathstroke. And just, I mean, freaking uh, harassing the shit out of her as well. Mm-hmm. Braun Perlman. And they all, it's so good. One of my favorite of his performances. Yeah, that's super good. Mm-hmm. I think, is Ron Perlman also the one? I, I think I think I think I'm I'm not mistaken. He also Ron Perlman does the voice of Fallout. Yes, he's War. the narrator for most of the changes, opening monologues. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That that dude's one of a kind. Oh, Hellboy too. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, I forgot about that. Oh yeah, dude. Hannibal Chow. Yeah, Pacific Rim. Oh yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah. This is some pretty good stuff. Oh yeah, Lord Hood from Halo. <laughs> also. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well. Um. Yeah, but but it, it is to go back into some of those. Right. I hope this serve does a nice like primer for you to slowly get back into these. Oh, I would love to. Because man, I've been wanting to come back to these for God knows how long now. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Mm-hmm. I, I would love to get back into some of these. Oh yeah. Um, and I'm trying to think. I mean, what else? I know that there's I, I, they're making another Deadpool movie. Is are they really? Yeah, it's Deadpool X Wolverine. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, and geez. Hugh Jackman's coming back. Oh my God, Hugh Jackman's coming back. Which I mean, that's crazy yeah. in and of itself. I can't believe Jeez. he's he's gonna be. I mean, that's that's gonna be something. That and then of course <laughs> I mean, you can't go wrong. It's Ryan Reynolds as right. Deadpool. So I mean, I think it's gonna be a fun time. I hope so. But like, I mean, as far as like you know, superhero stuff coming mm-hmm. on, I I wish that they had some more like X Men stuff. Yeah. I think it wasn't because isn't the license sort of like in limbo at the moment? 
Uh, or did uh, they get it back? I know. Well, maybe. I know that there was a few things that had that problem. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man being chief among them. Right. And I think Fox owned, or uh, I think it was Fox owned Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. So that was why, like, he was never in the Marvel Cinematic Universe right. until recent years. Mm-hmm. And that's also why the Fantastic Four has been bad. Oy. Cause, cause, oh, gosh. Because Marvel, <laughs> I don't think, has had full control over e. it. I think it was the same thing. I think Fox, or I think somebody else had the rights to the Fantastic Four. Which and then, of is course, such made, a shame. Yeah. Because I I enjoy the thing. Oh, yeah. Tis the clobbering hour, madam. Exactly. But... <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy Doctor Doom. Oh yeah, Doctor Doom as a Doom. villain. Yeah, I actually don't know a whole lot about like the comic book side of it. Oh, me neither. But or like or like the traditional media of like you know. But the premise of Doctor mm-hmm. Doom is super cool. Just the look, man. Yeah. That fucking mask, dude. I, yeah, it's so cool. I remember the one that came out. What was it like? Two thousand four. 2005 or something mm. like that. The Fantastic Four with... Um, oh, man. Who was in that movie? Uh, the, well, first of all, Chris Evans, who plays oh my God. Captain America. He plays the Human Torch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy I be- shit, I believe, it was, right. I believe it was also Jessica Alba. Right. Freaking mama. <laughs> I mean, you know, oh, my God. Like, that was the whole reason why I think I watched that movie was oh, for of course. Jessica Alba. You and more than a few yeah. others, I'm sure. <laughs> um, and... Uh, I I don't know the other guys' names. I know that. Um, let me see. Fantastic. If I can spell it correctly, mm-hmm. Fantastic Four. Make, make sure you put a four where the A's should be. <laughs> oh yeah, right, right. Fan four. Fan four. Yeah. <laughs> Fan four yeah, stick. yeah. Um. Ooh, I was close. Two thousand five is when it came out. Oh damn. Um. And. Uh, Um, hearing or those early 2000s yeah, yeah. years, dude. Jessica Alba, Chris Evans. Um, the thing was played by Michael uh, Chiklis hmm. and uh, Mr. Fantastic was um, that's I O A N I O A N. Yeah, Eon Grothed. Hmm. I suppose <laughs> that's what we're gonna go with. Julian McMahon was Doctor Doom. Hmm. So yeah, there was a. I remember the reason why I brought that one up was because I remember it was not a super great movie, mm-hmm. but like, but I remember watching it and having a little bit of fun with it because right. I mean that was one of the besides the Spider Man movies that was some of like the like the OG. Um, mm-hmm. Like one of the only other live action superhero films out at right. around the same time. Right. What a, I mean, it was cool. Mm-hmm. The, the thing's design in that film was really cool. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, it, it was like just the way they were able to put that together. I can't imagine how long it took. Uh, yeah. And it, cause you can definitely tell it was practical effects mm-hmm. with how that, that suit looks. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> oh, but it man. works. Yeah. <laughs> this is the first iteration of superhero movies. And, and boy, does it. It looks a little aged. Yeah, it had some rough patches. Yeah, you know. To be but sure. I, I never actually watched the newer one that came out in like the. Me neither. 2010s, but I heard it was not good. Yeah. That was about the only thing I heard about it. Um, I don't remember. 2015, so 10 years later, the the thing design also looks cool. I, I would say even better. Yeah? Yeah, in, <laughs> in this version. It doesn't look like a rubber suit. I see. Um, Michael B. Jordan's in this one. Oh, damn. Yeah. Uh, he's the Human Torch. <laughs> and then the guy... Uh, the guy who was in, he plays in a bunch of stuff, but the one thing that I can think of right now is, um, what's that drumming movie we watched? Whiplash. Whiplash. The guy who plays the lead in that movie. 
uh, the kid, like the, right. the kid that's playing the drums. He's the he's Mister Fantastic in that movie. Oh wow! Yeah, he also plays in a in a bunch of other stuff too, and I can't remember. That's the first one that came into my head. Yeah, is that one? But uh, his name is um, Miles Teller. Oh okay. Oh, he played in uh in Top Gun, Maverick. Really, Top Gun Maverick. He oh played, my god, yeah, he yeah, did. yeah, 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 yeah. So that was that, that's the one that I, the other one that I was thinking of because there was a couple of them that I was thinking about, but the first one that came out was Whiplash. But mm. I was like, what? There was another we watched like recently with him in it, and he plays. Uh, he does a great job in Top oh, Gun yeah. Maverick mm-hmm. as the son of uh, Goose. Goose. Mm-hmm. Son of Goose. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So that's fun. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, I I uh, I I, <laughs> I never watched that one. But uh, there's, I, a, I there's a cavalcade of different like superhero films I just haven't seen. Right, uh, be they good or otherwise, <sighs> it's just and then like, and then because of, like the the modern era of of uh, like the Marvel mm-hmm. universe, yeah, it just feels played out. It's hard to point. hard to keep track. Mm-hmm. But but the thing is, I think there are some good ones that I think I could get into watching. Yeah. Um. But like, I, because they're all like um, continuous or in mm-hmm. the same kind of, I feel like I would need to get the context for it and like yeah. watch all of them, which is like an insurmountable task at this point. All right. Um. Uh, but one thing I can say is that I've always liked Thor mm-hmm. and Loki and like all of them in like right. the Marvel cinematic versions of them. Mm-hmm. Been a really cool character, and I think that um, the actors have portrayed them very well. I think mm-hmm. it's really cool, and I've always been interested in Loki as a character. Yeah, because I I I love a I love a like a deep a, character. A dastardly trickster. Well, well, that too. But I mean, but I, <laughs> right. but I like the fact that I like a complex character. Mm. I, obviously, I'm not saying that Thor is not a complex character, but right. like he's the, he's the protagonist. So I think sometimes like you want him to be pretty, but I like, I like right, a misunderstood, I like a misunderstood character. I like yeah. a character that's got flaws and it's got struggles and you know, that kind of stuff. And I mm. watched the Loki series. Oh Yeah. Prime, really, I mean, really good. Hmm. I got nervous because they started dealing with time travel stuff oh, in God. it, but yeah. but they did it very well, and okay. it, and it's and it's I mean it's really good, and and um I think what the reason why I brought up the Marvel Cinematic Universe and I and to talk about it and mm-hmm. not talk too bad about it is because I think that they're they've been slowly but surely, um, like phasing out characters yeah. and like and and now moving into a new a new timeline a new history of things mm-hmm. so like after end game and everyone kind of went their separate ways and has their own life now it's like if we feel like we're getting conclusions to these characters right and loki had two seasons which were very well shot very well acted had some wonderful dialogue in it and uh, it was just unique in in a different way, yeah. Um, than like the the dialogue and the comedy and just the the relationships felt like they were doing something different than just making a Marvel movie, yeah, or making a movie in general. Mm. It was like some of the beats and some of the conversation things were like a little bit strange, but obviously they're talking about strange things. So it makes sense. And yeah. like the comedy is, it is, I mean, it's, it's really good because it's doesn't feel out of place. It's Tom Hiddleston and, and, and his companion throughout the show mm. that like that they both riff off each other is Owen Wilson. And they, <laughs> and they do such a great job. Because oh like I, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's a great show, and for the two seasons, like it ends up like rounding out as like being the kind of like sunsetting and conclusion of like Loki. Mm. So it's like you have like all these big characters are all kind of being 
sunset out and then now Loki's kind of being so there's like all these like big characters that are not now all kind of like being you know phased out and like we're going into this new so I feel like we're as opposed to like having this large repertoire of movies they'll never be able to catch up on yeah and also there's no end in sight now it's like we're kind of at like a a soft Clo- like some closure right so it's Something's like now, give. so now you have like this large repertoire of movies that like do kind of follow a chronological order and have this like soft stopping area of like mm. and that's going to be the conclusion oh, okay. so it's like so that feel so for me it feels nice and it feels like maybe I can tackle this project of like maybe we can go maybe I can watch one here one here one mm. here you know or that kind of stuff because I would like to now seeing the conclusion of like Loki's arc, I was like, man, now I kind of want to go back and see like all the little seeds that were planted that kind of get us to this point now. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that's going on. But I praise indeed. I may have to give it a look. Yeah. I'm not sure about some of the other ones, but Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and that was and I was nervous about Loki as well. But like, mm. but they had some great people on it. Yeah. And also Tom Hiddleston was like an executive producer on it. It's so like not only was he like acting in it, but he was also like being one yeah. of the showrunners on it. Had some pull as far and as it, like what the direction of the show was going to be. Oh, the and it, I mean obviously you're all, you're also dealing with Disney and Marvel budget. Right. So that that series itself practically infinite money. That series itself had not a lot of special effects, but the special effects they did have Top notch. The only thing I will say is, I'm not going to spoil anything by saying this. There is a, um, uh, there is a condition that Loki gets from doing time traveling, mm-hmm. where he, um, without a special device, kind of gets ripped from one timeline to another. Yeah. In the same physical space, but just th- through different planes in time. If that's yeah, if, if that even makes any sense in in, in English words, right. um, and when they do that, the special effects team made like this kind of like warping, like like and like erratic movement mm. that like they wanted it to look like it hurt, Ooh. like because because he's being forcibly ripped through t- through time, right. um, not really space, and so and of course you know the actor does a great job of like mm. conveying that, but like the way that they like kind of like warped and like kind of twisted his body around mm-hmm. like very like erratic and twisty and jerky and of course you know the performance of um Tom Hiddleston he's like putting his whole body into it yeah. so he's like being <laughs> it really like it can with the special with a little bit of special effects that like they w- was a, a lot of work from mm-hmm. what i had heard about and also like I mean the committing of the performance like you'd have these moments where he would just like do this kind of weird like erratic motion and go like Gah. oh god oh god <laughs> and of course everyone around him was like i don't What's like to on, bro? <laughs> at, at one point in time owen wilson he was like i'm sorry but i can't look if you're gonna do that i can't i can't look at you anymore because <laughs> oh he's like it, look, it looks like it hurts oh, that's funny <laughs> and so that's the kind of like that's the kind of uh the camaraderie they have in yeah. that movie and it it feels really good <laughs> it feels kind of like a buddy cop movie too like or a buddy mm. cop series in a way because they're anyways it's just wow it's really fun and it's really cool owen wilson is, is a great actor as well he's always he's always a, he's always great yeah so oh man yeah, but uh, anyways, we kind of I think we went off on a little rabbit trail. A little talking bit, about, yeah. about my uh, my angel of sleep awaits. Yes, <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> All right. Well, I am looking forward to this coming year. Mm-hmm. I have had some people who are friends of mine. Yeah, and who are also listeners of the show. They want to hear us talk more about games. Oh goodness, Lord! Knows I know. I, got a shit ton. I know that I have talked about this for I think the first couple of years of this show, mm-hmm. but um, I, I I really have. There's been a couple of people in my life that I've I've talked to specifically, and they've said it. And then of course, as I, as I've taken that one conversation and started like talking to other people about it and being mm-hmm. like, hey, what would uh, what would you feel about if we were to talk about? Some some games and some things we enjoy. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh yeah, you, come on, you guys got to do that. Mm-hmm. 
and, and so now I feel um, I feel more emboldened to to try something new if we wanted to. Now yeah. that I know that people are like actually kind of interested in it, mm-hmm. it's one thing to do it. I mean, I know that this show has always been that of right. we can just do whatever we want. Yeah, and I love Ain't that. No restrictions. Ain't here. no restrictions. But sometimes it is nice to know that, like that people are like actually on board with the idea. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. Just a little bit of uh, community feedback is, right. is a long There's way. always a bit of hesitance because, like, what if people don't like it? And then I remember, oh, I yeah, don't I care. Don't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do what I want to do. <laughs> exactly. I'm still thinking about how to effectively do that. Mm-hmm. Um, like, talk about it. Because I, I've thought about it. And I was like, we get to talk about game news, to be honest. But yeah. I was like, hmm, do we want to do that? I don't know. Yeah. We could. But there's a lot of games we could play, and I want to play something. Yes, I want to. I want to. Like I said, uh, probably a few weeks ago, if not a few months ago, I, was like, I want to be able to allocate some time mm-hmm. towards MS playing Saga. And, oh, dude. <laughs> oh no! I'm hyped that up so much. It's gonna yes. be so underwhelming once we actually boot it up. Bruh. Oh man. Well, I mean, here's hoping. Right. I, we'll I, I think it's gonna be. I. I <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> we I've been going hard in Grand Blue. Uh-huh. I finally oh, yeah. had we both. had had a little bit of time off of work and a couple days mm-hmm. and we ended up I ended up plowing through those missions. Oh, yeah. I got them all done, dude, and I feel good. Mm-hmm. I mean I am, As soon as you reach that upper echelon of like power level for your character, yeah. for whichever one you decide to main. Oh, I don't know why. why uh, I'm offended. <laughs> All of them. No, uh, no, no. Anyways. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, dude, it's so satisfying. Oh, I bet. I've I've told you already that I've been farming. Mm-hmm. Farming. Okay. Proto Bahamut. Yes. Like he isn't the toughest thing you yeah, can yeah, fight like in the game. Yeah, he isn't the toppest of top. <laughs> exactly. But, man, He's it's... He's got that shit down... Down to a science. I do. There's a whole process, and it's super easy. It just trivializes the whole thing as <laughs> long as the rest of the team knows what they're doing. Right. But um, it's the only infuriating part about it is that he hasn't dropped my final scythe yet. Mm. It's the one thing I'm playing that quest over and over for. Yeah. And I keep getting everybody else's weapons, but not Vasaraga's, yeah. and it's killing me. But one day... You'll have to. The, the thing is, you have to not want it as much. Yeah. The second you let it I'm, go, I'm just. I'm playing for the satisfaction of it. Right. Right. Just right. to say that. No. No. no, no, no. Beaten... You have to. You have to say like, I don't want it. I don't need this. <laughs> if this I'm just drops doing that this. Weapon, I'm gonna be so pissed. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that <laughs> weapon. But I think it's a, the universe <laughs> secretly knows that you want it that bad, and they're like, mm, Nah. No. Vasaraga is gonna be the last one. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no please. <laughs> Uh, I the reason why I, I said I got offended earlier was because Dylan says whichever character you, you decide to main as if I have been main lighting one character this right. whole time. It was just like a general I, I, statement. I, I, I think I, or I, less, I, I think he's also talking to anybody else out there right. who's listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but anyways, yes, there I've been playing Percival, mm-hmm. and uh, I the I, I've been telling people that not only are these like once you beat the campaign. There's like a prerequisite quest, like a chain of quests that you do um, to unlock the like hardcore difficulties mm-hmm. that like that that are the in-game content for this game. Right. And uh, the story mode is has to be single player, but these prerequisite quests you can do as a team online. So I, the second I finished those uh, that campaign, I was like, "Come on, buddy!" And Ethan and Dylan were available. And yep. not only are not only do the <laughs> missions themselves give you more XP, mm-hmm. so like they the quests themselves kind of boost, you know, like they kind of you know, um, they really blast you through the levels mm-hmm. already. But the but the real <laughs> but the real reason that I think I was flying through the levels so much was because Dylan is obviously level 100 and his land is capped out on all yeah. his stuff so he would go into some fights and I would just I wouldn't put any effort into it and I was like I'm just here <laughs> right. I'd be moral I support go now slave 
Kill yeah, not beast. even. I would be just like the cheerleader <laughs> from the side. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, God. I'm like, I'm part of the team, and my sword is drawn. I'm ready to go, but I'm like, hell yeah, go the team. Principal's just got some pom pom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, go team, go. Oh my God. I'm just like flinging fireballs around. Right. Is what it is. But, but, because again, if I even, like, like, it, it, if you get yourself in that that headspace of like, okay, here we go. Here's a boss fight. Mm-hmm. Here's what we're in. Like you like you get like like tensed up, yeah, ready to go. Pumped up. Yeah, I mean there was there's no you wanna talk about like uh It's like a balloon just yeah. deflating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dylan would corner it for a second and hit it real real good a handful of times and it'd be mm-hmm. dead. And I was like, I, well, I may I have I think got my favorite instance of that bruh. was whenever we fight the uh the I forget what it was called, but the the floating eyeball. I don't know what it's called either yet. The Qua Core or something. Yeah, and we start up the quest, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, man, I hate these things. <laughs> and as soon as I'm able to move, I use Battalions of Fear, and I yeah. just slice the motherfucker in half, I mean, and he's I, dead. I, <laughs> there's been a couple of times where, like, a boss fight will start, and I'll get a couple of hits off. Not that one. <laughs> he, he did that, and, it, and the thing is, it was instantaneous <laughs> the 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 uh, the mission start screen said three two one go and then it was like mission complete <laughs> and i was like okay uh, damn uh, oh it was so it was, funny I mean, it was funny it was great Man. um but with that now like i mean I, I went from level 50 to like 75 or 78 oh yeah we've been juicing so like i said not only is it i'm power leveling because of the actual experience but i think it was also like the time duration was so small as well because again we're just like flying through these quests mm. too so anyways that's I, I was a lot of fun though yeah. and, I, and i enjoy that game a lot speaking of games that i want to talk about and want to you know enjoy some more mm-hmm. um that's one of them oh yeah um, but there's other rpgs there's like other MS classic saga. <laughs> like a lot of, oh gosh <laughs> like ms saga for those of you uh, who don't know, I know nothing about this game, but it me is a. <laughs> but it is a. I have yet to look up any game. It is a. For I it. think it is a chibi variation of like a, a turn-based RPG. I think. Of for Gundam. We looked at the instruction manual and it was like, oh fuck, yeah, it's one of these. <laughs> it's one of those. <laughs> the I I got um some first-hand screenshots of the remakes of the Tomb Raider games. Really. And I believe that it's just like a remaster. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're they're. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't think they're like changing the the gameplay or the um or like the map layouts or anything yeah. like that. I, mean, I could be wrong, but um, I believe it's just like a facelift, or it's just and and some of it looks pretty cool. If the render distance, like the. The fucking shadow, oh like yeah, the deep void, yeah, the is still black there void that a T Rex may or may not just oh, waltz God. into. Terrifying is uh, yeah. I hope that sticks around because that added to the the oh the horror, horror factor of yes. it. Yes, I have to find the meme again where it's like <laughs> you're Laura Croft and you stumble across right. like the living dinosaurs after yeah. in in just a secluded environment. Yeah, she's just got a fucking shotgun like shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shame. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. Well, anyways, thank you so much for listening, everyone. This has been fun, and it's been very nostalgic, this mm-hmm. episode, talking about, you know, Batman. Oh, Again, yeah. It's been a long time since I've enjoyed Batman, mm-hmm. and it's also gotten me itching to watch the big O. <laughs> yeah. Once we finish up, once we finish up Outlaw Star, I know you said that you didn't want to, like, we didn't have to watch it all the way through, but, I mean... You, you started the fire and now uh, it's still yeah, burning. Yeah. Which is not a problem. I right, love right. the show. It's yeah. a, I mean, I feel like it's a great problem to have. Is like I love shows like this and I, I would like to see more shows like this mm-hmm. and or it, it, things in this kind of ballpark. But like as far as um anime that you have shown me, mm-hmm. um this is really hitting it for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like more so than I thought. <laughs> I love Cowboy Bebop. I love the Big O. Those are like the ones that like I I can really consider that I I really love the aesthetic. I love the vibe. I love the story. Outlaw Star is I think really taking that third place position. Nice. I I just I I it, it has so many great things mm-hmm. about it. It, it, but for different reasons than the other two that I just mentioned. Right. But like, anyways, so. I, once we finish up that, I really, I'm really considering we should watch the Big O again because it's been a while, and I it has been. Yeah, I want to feel that again. 
Um, Sounds like a plan. But anyways, um, for any of you out there who are looking to reach out to us, you can just type in, um, uh, if you go on YouTube in the search bar, you can type at Hindsight Studios and you can find um, a little playlists there for the podcasts. Um, and I say podcasts because I'm also talking about the About Nothing podcast. Mm-hmm. It's little, back. A little free promo for Ethan. This um, this show is about nothing. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, Ethan. He sits down and talks about anything. We talked about whiskey for, I think, over an hour. Yeah. Uh, this, the, the recent one. So I would go go listen to that one and it was a lot of fun and I'm pretty sure we did what was our what was the gremlins we did oh god the descriptor gremlins <laughs> yeah that was uh, in the Grand Blue episode oh the really aftermath. yeah oh well, we recorded it on the same day right. so. <laughs> anyways <laughs> yeah. regardless there was a the episodes of the show mm-hmm. are great right that I'm getting a little mixed up but anyways <laughs> um, you can find the shows there or you can type in the aftermath on all the major podcasting platforms and should be able to find us that way mm-hmm. But anyways, until next time, thank you so much for listening. See you. Bye-bye.